Hello world! Today we'll have a look at the structure of the advertising packet. Both advertising and data packet have the same structure. So now let's have a look at the various fields of an advertising packet. First field is preamble. Preamble literally means introduction. The advertiser in this case sends a series of ones and zeros so that the receiver can synchronize the timings or frequency and adjust its amplitude using automatic gain control. Basically, preamble is needed to receive the rest of the packet successfully. It is one byte in size. Then comes the access address field. The value of this one is fixed for an advertising packet. It isn't really an address, but it is more of a code, which indicates that the packet is of the advertising type. The size of this one is four bytes. Next up is the PDU or the protocol data unit. The size of this one can vary between two to 39 bytes. We'll decode this one in a while. Next is the CRC or cyclic redundancy check. This is nothing but a 24-bit code, which is used to detect any accidental changes in the bit values. If the CRC check fails, which means if the message got corrupted, then the entire packet is discarded. This is what the packet looks like at the link layer level. Note that the packets are transmitted with LSB first, and preamble is transmitted first. But we aren't concerned with all the fields. Our focus will be on specific fields of the PDU as the rest of the fields will be automatically filled by the stack. Okay, so now let's have a look at the protocol data unit field. It can be further broken down into header of two bytes and payload, which can be up to 37 bytes long. The header consists of six fields. First is the PDU type, which simply indicates if it is an advertising PDU or a scanning PDU or an initiating PDU. You can check part two of this whole series on advertisements for details related to the various advertising types. And the link to that video will be in the description below. All right, so four bits are provided for this field. Next is RFU, which simply means it is reserved for future use. The size of this one is one bit. Then there is channel selection bit. If the advertiser supports LE channel selection algorithm too, then this bit will be set. But what is this algorithm all about? Well, it means that the advertiser supports improved frequency hopping mechanism. This algorithm was introduced in version 5. Next is the TX address bit. The advertiser's address will be public if the value of this bit is 0 and it will be random if the value is 1. Similarly for Rx, the target's address is public in case of a 0 and random in case of a 1. Then there is payload length field, which is one byte long, pretty straightforward. Now let's have a quick look at the payload field. The payload field can be further broken down into advertiser address field, which is six bytes long. This one simply contains the public or random address of the advertiser as specified by the TX ad bit. Next is the advertiser data payload field, which is zero to 31 bytes long. This one contains the advertising data as specified by the host. Now, depending on the type of advertisement, the payload's size will vary. For instance, in case of directed advertisement, the payload size is six bytes, as it contains only the address of the targeted central device. As the advertising interval in case of directed type is very small, Thus, it doesn't make any sense to congest the channels by sending in more data than required. Now, the payload can be further broken down into one or more AD structures or advertising structures. And apart from the advertising structure, there is something called as a non-significant part as well. But that won't be transmitted over the air. Thus, we won't be discussing it. So coming back to AD structure, each AD structure contains three fields. First is length which is of one byte, and it specifies the length of the structure, excluding the length byte itself. Next is the AD type. This one specifies the type of data that is contained in the structure. And finally, there is advertising data field, which contains the actual data as defined by the AD type field. A list of all the available AD types can be found on the official Bluetooth SIG website. These are some of the commonly used AD types. Now let's consider an example to put things into perspective. Let's try and see if we can decode the advertising packet 
by simply looking at its raw data. We can split this raw data into AD structures by looking at the length field. It helps us in finding the boundaries. The length field in case of AD1 is 2, which means there'll be two elements after the length field. Next is the AD type. You can decode the type by looking at the AD type table. 0, 1 is for flags. Five flags, each of one bit, can be set when the advertising packet is of type connectable. Here the value is 6, which means two flags corresponding to bit 1 and 2 are set. According to core specification, these flags are LE general discoverable mode and BREDR not supported, which means Bluetooth classic isn't supported. Next AD structure is of three bytes. AD type is three, which is nothing but complete list of 16 bit service class UUIDs. The value of this particular AD is 180D, which corresponds to heart rate service. The byte order, as you can see in this case, is reversed as multi-byte values for BLE are transferred in little Indian order. The last structure is of length 18 in decimal or 12 in hex. Type is 09, which stands for complete local name. Value in this case is heart rate example. So heart rate example is the name which is displayed if you are say trying to scan this device with your smartphone. So with this video and the previous two parts, we have covered the topic of advertising in a good amount of depth. Don't forget to check the entire playlist on BLE and like and share this video and hit the subscribe button now. With that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye world.